forth in untouched way. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you on this morning, Lord God. We praise you on this morning, Lord God, because you are going to bless us on this morning, Lord God. And even if you don't bless us in the way that we want you to bless us, Lord God, we thank you for how you have kept things away from us that we have prayed for, that you felt that, or you knew was not right for us, Lord God. So we thank you right now, Lord God. And even as we pray this prayer, Lord God, we are asking for forgiveness, Lord God, of all of our sins, Lord God, every known and unknown sin, Lord God, every thought of the mind, the tongue, and deed, Lord God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, help us to, um, as you forgive us, Lord God, help us to forgive each other, Lord God, and ourselves, Lord God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we release this atmosphere to you, Lord God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God, for it is in your precious son, Jesus' name. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.
you in uh, prayer. If I was sick and I was shut in. Amen. Amen. Uh, all those who are not in church that are sick or not feeling well, we ask you to continue to pray for them. So we ask you to continue to pray for Pastor uh, Derek Holmes of the Second Baptist Church of Circleville. Uh, uh, I'm talking about really pray. Really, really pray. I mean, I know I said pray, but we always should pray, but lift up his, as a matter of fact, call his name when you pray. Uh, Pastor Derek Holmes of the Second Baptist Church in Circleville. We will be going there today and have a prayer service for him. Uh, so the pastors of the city will go uh, down to his church today, but we ask that you would pray for him. Those of you watching on virtual, write his name down on your paper, in your Bible, but pray for him. Amen. Uh, I'm grateful that this is Women's Month. Amen. 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 Um, I'm a little jealous because since the Christian, I ain't seen a Men's Month, but I don't. Maybe it's kind of, I, I don't know, but. But uh, this is Women's Month, and we are honoring our women. We're grateful for all of our women. Amen. There's some great women in the Bible. There's some great women in this church. Amen. And we thank God. There's some great women in this church. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all of you as we celebrate Women's Month. Some people look at me, Women's Month. Yes, it's Women's Month. I'd be surprised at you. Amen. Hey, listen, I want to sincerely thank all of you for your prayers your words of encouragement, your text messages and all, as I defended my work last week. assigned me to today and we will move forward after this choir has blessed us again with a selection. Baby. 
and it flows to the lowest level. will never lose this time. Come on, bless God this choir. Can you give God a hand of praise? Uh, this is in our choir. So God is also continues to bless our choir because our music ministry. We're just grateful for what he does. The blood will never lose. When you know that the Lord has touched you, you have really been touched. Let, let me do this text. Uh, 
uh, Reverend Cocker comes with mighty long. This thing is so pregnant with, with uh, information. I hope I can kind of dot around some of it and move out your way. But I want to deal with this Texas one because, Lady Golden, uh, uh, we all want the Lord to touch us again. And notice I said in my subject, not I want you to, I need to fix it, I need you to. Okay, okay. There's some safe things that I need, I, I can't really believe. I need the Lord to touch me again. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. If you look at our text today, uh, Sister Katrina, it, 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 it introduces us to a blind man. Another blind man. He's about to experience a thrill for, for greater than causing a busy intersection with blinded eyes. We look at this blind man. He is about to experience one of the strangest miracles in the New Testament. So they held Jesus and, and, and his men returned from Bethsaida in verse 22. The last time they were there, Jesus had healed many of the sick. We look at Mark chapter 6, you'll see that. Now he returns and a group of people bring a blind man to Jesus, begging him to perform another healing miracle. Y'all can pray with me, aren't you? Yeah. The request is, Brother Matthew, that for Jesus to touch this man. Yeah. These people were Gentiles, and they had come to believe that Christ's power to heal resided in his touch. Yeah. Somebody say, in his touch. Yeah. They failed to understand, Dr. McCreary, that he was able to heal with a word yeah. or with a thought. Yeah. Even he was able to heal with a desire. So as we watch the Lord bring sight to this blind man, there's there's more going to that we're going to see here. They 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 meet and meet the eye. There's some things going to happen in this text that's going to, that's going to bless us. Like all the, of Christ's other miracles, this one seems to be forsaken. For, for I mean, far different to the disciples than they'd seen before. Yeah. You see, all the Lord's miracles are really parables in action. Yeah. Jesus has been trying to teach his men that he is the Messiah. That he is God in the flesh. That they have failed to get the message in spite of seeing him do the amazing and impossible again and again. They did. They 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 forgot what Jesus had done. Uh, I, I'm going. I'm not going to mess with that because there's some folk I'm looking at. There's some folk I'm sitting in this room and they have forgot what Jesus has done. Like you said, you got to make them give God praise. You got to beg them to open their mouth. You got to ask them to raise their hands. We maybe some of us have forgot what God has done for us. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, all oh, that He's done for me, you can't make me down. I begin to raise my hand. I open my voice. My voice get loud because I can remember what He's done for me. And I need my five folks in on this side. They say, "Remember, I know what He's done for me. And I sure can remember. That's it. I can remember what He's done for me." And, and then these people began to think about how He has taken out what He has done for them. Gotta remember, we gotta remember, we gotta remember. I, 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 I struggle sometimes with the T because uh, I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I get excited about when I think of the goodness of Jesus. I get excited when I know he's done for me. I get excited when I think about when I was almost outdoors. I get excited when I think about I was almost about to divorce. I get excited when I think my children was almost about to go to jail. Y'all look at me strange. I get excited when I think about I was almost about to take that last street. I get excited when I think about I was almost about to lose my car. See, because when I think about what God has done for me, I have to make your God praise all over again. And there's somebody that really needs to be touched again because you don't forgot what God has done for you. There's a folk watching me need to be touched again because you don't forgot what God did for you. You forgot God raised you on some sick bed. You forgot God said you're Lord our husband. You forgot God pulled you out the drug house. You forgot God lifted you up when you couldn't find yourself. You don't forgot God put a roof over your head last night. You forgot God gave your bed to lay in last night. You forgot God kept rain the water off of you. You forgot God gave your food to eat. And when I think about what God oh, felt that Uh, and, and, and sister 
Now, it raises several questions. And I hope I can answer these emotions through this text because the, the, question, first, the first question I have for you is why did Jesus lead the man, lead, lead the man out of town before he again? Yes, sir. Brother Nellon, I'm wondering, why did Jesus take him out of town? Uh, uh, okay, okay. Well, some of y'all got that. Okay, Sister Terry Massey. Why did he heal by simply touching the man? Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. do know he can't get you. Okay, okay. I got another question. I got another question. I got another question, uh, uh, Brother Weishin. Why use such an unconventional means of saliva? Yeah, yeah. Speech. <laughs> Why didn't the man receive perfect sight immediately like everybody else did? Yeah. Uh, 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 I got this question because I wonder Jesus has performed miracles before. Yeah. But, but this is the only cure in the gospel which took place in this and took, it happened in, in, in places and stages. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, finally, why did Jesus forbid this man to go back into town and tell somebody. Come on now. Can y'all read me for a minute, Mother Wilkerson? Yeah. If the Lord has done something for me, yeah. <laughs> you can't keep me quiet. Yeah. That's, well. That's why you got four minutes to shout and raise their hand and scream it because they know not you. I hear you, Jesus. Be quiet. But wait, watch this. The man was blind. As a matter of fact, he had to tell nobody because they knew he was blind. And watch this. When he came back into the city, he had to tell nobody. Well, okay, okay, okay. I miss somebody. I miss somebody, Sister Rose. There's the folks sitting in here. I know you've been through hell and high water. And every time I see you jump on your feet, I can tell that God done something for you. Every time I see you put your hands in, I can tell God done something for you. Every time I see you holler on your mouth, I can tell God. You ain't got to tell nobody because your actions show God been good to you. Boy, I deserve to be good to me already. And there's the folks in the room. They say, Reverend, I'm sorry. I know you told us to sit down. I know you told us to be quiet. I know folks let me crazy. But when I know what God has done for me, I've got to open my mouth and say something. So here, 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 and it's not obligated to give an account for his actions. No, he's not. Well, uh, uh, there's a valid reason why he do what he do. Yes, it is. And I ain't talking about two folk in the room. That's right. What yes. God doing in your life right now? Yes, sir. He's sovereign. Yes, sir. You gotta let God do what God do. He knows what's best for you. You might have thought you lost that job. Let God do what He do. You might have thought you lost that loved one. Let God do what He do. You might have thought Leroy walked out on you. Tell me more about God. Let God. Do what he do. He's Wait, can, can I share this with you girl in this message? And, and we're going we to we get through this. Uh, there's some things in your life that you still got to go through to get through the process. There's some things that God just not going to happen, let it happen immediately. There are some things, Sister Thomas, that, that God says, I'm going to have to take you through the process. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Don't ever expect just because you pay, you pay the price that you're not going to go through the process. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on now. Come on, come on. Just because the price has been paid doesn't mean you are exempt from a process. Yeah. Good news, you know, God, is this. The process is not for your freedom. The process is in your freedom. The story of Mark, chapter 8, which the, 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 this story reminds us God's way of doing things, how he processes things. And, and takes us through things. Just because you're going through a process doesn't always mean it's the devil. Come on. Let, me, let me talk to this side. This side is funny. Just because you're going through the process don't always mean it's the devil. 
Brother Mullen, some of you guys, I said, Brother Mullen, she got that. Just because you are going through the process, don't always blame the devil. Sometimes God takes you the process because he's developing you in the process. Lean in. Y'all remember those old pictures that you're taking the dark room and shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking until the picture finally comes forward. Sometimes your picture won't come forward until God do some shaking in your life. God has developed you. Kids back here, half of them don't know it. But in Matthew, they should be about a 35 millimeter camera. Uh -huh. All right. You don't know about that. But you have to take that and have a roll like this. You have to take it somewhere to develop. And Matthew, what they did, they went to the back room somewhere. Turn off all the lights. Put the film through the water solution. And Matthew, when they got through, they brought your picture what you took. Mark, 
It's straight to the point. That's yes, right. That's Mark's right. gospel is different from the other four quartet gospel writers. Mark, Mark yes, is right to the point. Come on, Mark, Mark, Mark goes straight to the point in the book. And Mark talks about this book, 19 Miracles, yes. to reinforce his thesis on what Jesus can do before he goes to Calvary that he does before he brought humanity. Yeah. He, he, he shares with us. When Mark writes his writing, he assigns his writing to, to, to the working of Christ in the word straightway. straightway. And immediately. Yeah. When you read Mark's writing, that's, that's what we're talking about the time. Mark, Mark spends a lot of time talking about, he, he says straightway. Yeah. And, that's, and he says immediately. And, 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 and I believe that so the Greek word for immediately is euthesis. Okay. It's used 59 times in the New Testament. Only euthesis used outside the gospel of Acts. But of the 50 times it's used in the gospel, it's used 41, 50 times used in the Bible, it's used 51 times in the gospel of Mark. So almost 70% of this word is used in the gospel of Mark. You can really say uh, 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 that, that, that the gospel of Mark is the gospel of euthesis or the gospel of immediately. It's immediately every time Mark documents something, Jesus did it was straight away yeah. or immediately. Can I give you a few? Mark chapter one verse ten. And immediately, coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Mark chapter one verse eighteen. Jesus passed along with the Sea of Galilee and. Simon and his brother Andrew was there, and immediately they left their nets and followed him. Mark chapter 1, verse 31, when you look at this, talk about Peter's mother-in-law. Uh, he was soon to come through the synagogue, and they entered to Simon and Andrew, and James and John was there, and uh, he, he went to uh, his, uh, uh, Peter's mother-in-law, so he came and took her by the hand and lifted her, and immediately the fever left her body. John, Mark, Mark chapter 1, 42, Jesus plays a leper. And you know, you look at verse, verse uh, 42, and immediately, and soon, as he had spoken, immediately, the leprosy left the man. Mark chapter 22, verse 12. And immediately, he arose, took up his bed, and went forth before them. Mark chapter 5, 29. Y'all get this? Immediately, her bleeding stopped. Mark 5, 42. And immediately, the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age. Mark chapter 35. Immediately, his ears were opened. And the impediment of his tongue was loose. Mark 10, 52. And immediately then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith is made whole. Yeah. And immediately right. he received this sight and followed Jesus. Yeah. Well, here it is right here. In Mark chapter 8, it didn't happen immediately. No. One time. Come on now. It didn't happen immediately all the time. But think Moses get right here. It happened immediately. Everything else happened immediately. Yeah. It is an inconsistency here amongst the Mark, the Mark's gospel. This is the first time in Christ's ministry, in his work, it did not happen immediately. It happened in steps and stages. Yeah. Why, why, why? The, the, the miracles, of my, my brothers and sisters, the, the miracles is a rare of Mark's gospel. Most theologians suggest that it was most realistic to reality. Yeah. Amen. Because God doesn't do it all the time. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Just because it says steps and stages, it don't mean that uh -huh. Jesus has nothing to do with it. Amen. Amen. Can I give you my first point? We gonna uh, get through this thing here. See. The first thing I want you to see in this text is that the they were who plead. For healing. The they, stay with me, who plead for healing. Verse 22. They came to Bethsaida. The identified they. These are the, 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 they, the, they brought him to Jesus. The identified they. They begged him to touch him. The identified they. When you look at this lady going, oh my God, I'm going to help somebody. This is the gospel of evangelism.
evangelism. They are still unidentified. So just these are the people that don't start gossip, they start rebuilding. These are the day, the, these are the day that says, I don't have time to worry about what you've been doing. I want to know where I can get you to. These are the day, the day that was unidentified, but they want to evangelize. Thank God somebody knows where Jesus is when you can't find him. These are the days, these are the day. They, in verse 22, they begged Jesus to touch him. It was the faith of others that got this man to Jesus. Nothing is said about the blind man having faith. They brought him to Jesus. But they got to the point where Jesus could do something and then they asked. It's the unidentified individuals. Uh, uh, Brother Moses, they didn't give no name. Who brought this blind man to Jesus? Well, and they are the ones who begged Jesus to touch him. Uh, uh, they were not doing this to get their name called. They didn't bring them so they could say, "Look who bought them, brother so and so, sister so and so, brother so and so." Oh, no, 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 no. They brought him and begged Jesus yes. to do what he does. Yes. You have to watch those folk who jump up and do stuff to get their name called. Watch them. They will volunteer for everything just to get their name called. They'll jump up all the time. Just watch them. Just to get their name called. They can't what they're doing, but they'll jump up to get their name called. Watch them. These people here, they care deeply for the man. They care enough that they want to see him taken care of. They want to see him well. They wanted him to be well. Uh, They care enough to make a difference. Amen. Here's the question. Do you care enough Amen. to make a difference? Well, uh, apparently, he had been blind for a while. And they wanted to help him. Maybe they were tired of carrying him. <laughs> Stay with me. Yeah. Don't get ahead of yourself, Cole. Maybe they were still praying for him. Come on now. But they cared enough for him to stop carrying him. Who you carrying?
there's some folk that been praying for you and praying for you that you uh, don't even know what you, who was who was praying for you. You have what you have because somebody prayed for you. You live what you live because somebody prayed for you. You do what you do because somebody prayed for you. You got the job you got because somebody prayed for you. You sit up at church today because somebody prayed for you. And you ought to thank God for the day. They prayed for you. That's why you should look down on nobody else. Because somebody prayed for you too. Uh, uh, let me give you the second point. Second point is we have a, a partning, I mean a partial healing. A partial healing. You said verse 23 and 24. Uh, one of the things that makes this miracle so unique is that this is the only time in the gospel record where Jesus healed someone in stages. Usually, as I said earlier, Jesus either touched them or spoke to them and they were healed. Here Jesus used two steps, a two-step process. And really, it's a three-step process because he touched it three times. Mm -hmm. I know we look at it and say he touched it twice. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you three times how y'all got me? Uh -huh. He touched him when he took him out of the city. Yes, Come on now. Yes, okay. He touched him when he spit on him. Oh, he touched him a third time. One for the Father. Come on. Come on. One for the Son. One for the Holy Ghost. Yes. I tried you to touch. Yes. Oh God, I let this game do it. But he touched him three times. But, 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 but here you see, there's a process. And this reminds us that you can't put our God in a box. God works with individuals and each, and each one of us as however important we are to him, whatever is important to him, he worked with us different. Jesus raised three people from the dead over the course of his earthly ministry. Each one was done different. He just, he just the door of Jairus. He just the skeptical of which man was carrying the body of uh, 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 Naomi's son, Naya son. He spoke to Lazarus. He touched three people three different times Amen. to bring them back to life. His healing miracles are often different. He healed one leper by touching him. He healed a group of ten lepers by speaking to them. Sometimes Jesus would go where the sick individuals was. Other times he would bring the sick to him. What are you saying, daughter? Don't get caught up on how God healed your neighbor. And don't tell God how to heal your neighbor. Uh-oh, I just made some folk mad. I just made some folk mad. You know how we bring folks to the Lord and say, Lord, now get that taste out of their mouth. Lord, now get them saved. Lord, take them off of drugs. Lord, deliver them from this. Lord, do, you don't tell God how to deliver nobody. He didn't tell nobody to I deliver you. It was a lot. I'm not supposed to let me strange. Your mama didn't get you off drugs. Your pastor didn't get you off crack. Y'all looking at me strange. You just stopped on the streets that cause you got old. It was the Lord. The man. Amen. Well, get, get, get this, get this, get this, get this, get this. You and I just can't shove God in a box. No, that's Lord. And say that's how he does it every time. Amen. Lord, the little bit of them folk tell you to be healed in three days. Mm-hmm. The Lord told me to tell you to turn around five times. Well, the liberal folk who say, put this right here on your back and watch God move. The liberal folk say, put the Bible on your lap. And the liberal folk who tells you what God's going to do to you. God has a way of blessing you. There ain't nobody got nothing to do with it. And God will bless you the way folk will understand. Let's watch how Jesus works this blind man's life. Jesus knows all that was in the, within this man. Get that. Jesus knew all that was within this man. I need you to do me a favor real quick. Put your name where I said this man. In other words, Mr. Rosson, Jesus knows what's all within you. The man needs to be taken aside. He takes the blind man away from the crowd. This, the, the, this blind man, Jesus takes him to the side. Jesus takes him by the hand.
and bring him out of the village. Maybe that he could more easily focus his attention and concentrate on Jesus. Amen. Maybe, Maybe Jesus know if you bring somebody to him, you might try to tell him how to handle them. He takes him out of the crowd. Maybe Jesus know that, if, that, that, that he needs to know that if I open your eyes quickly, you might get dazzled and bewildered by the crowd. So I'm going to take you outside. Maybe Jesus know that when you bring people to Jesus to be delivered, he takes them away because they need to be delivered from you. And brings him out of the village. Let me give you a background look and say why he bring him out. Y'all ready? Y'all got to keep this. Let me teach this. Okay. okay. It's first Sunday, y'all. We, we go a little long on first Sunday. Um, <laughs> Bethsaida is near the place where Jesus fed the 5,000 in Luke. Yeah. They were giving clear evidence, Mr. Williams, that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. She should be around. But they refuse to believe in him. Y'all right. miss that. Right. They were given evidence that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. But they refuse to believe in him. Okay, okay. As a result, he pronounced a curse on the city of Ben Satan. So, 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 so. Jesus had to take this blind man out of the city. He'd already cursed. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> uh, uh, that is why Jesus told the man not to return to the town. The town was off limits. But Jesus still went to deal with the individuals. Here it is. This is going to bless your socks off. Now come get me. Uh, Jesus takes him that's the same. This is a blessing behind the scene. Because Bethsaida is cursed. Max chapter 9, he has somebody say, let me fact check your fact check, Max chapter 9, listen right there. So, so, so Jesus cursed Bethsaida. Mm -hmm. Took him out of some stuff he was in. Uh -huh. Come on now. That's why, children of God, yes, God brought you out. You were in, he brought you out of that relationship because it was cursed. He brought you from that job because it was a curse. He, 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 you, you didn't do nothing wrong with the job, you were doing what you're supposed to do, but you lost the job because the job was cursed. That's why some folks you can't hang around no longer, they're cursed. And the funny, we'll speak to you. Always saying, I'm fine. Jesus brought you out of that cursed situation. Isn't it funny? You're teaching good today, how, how folk who do you wrong oh. avoid you? How folk do you wrong yes, and they won't speak to you, thank you, baby, and they won't speak to you? Yeah. Matthew. 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 Uh, Matthew. Matthew. They look at like at you like they avoid you. That's what they done to pass them on. They want to speak to me. I don't care. They gotta speak it up and speak to you. And if you don't say nothing, that's all right. Because I got a God to serve. I don't care. I'm not gonna let you make me this glory because you ain't a fool. I'm just crazy. I'm gonna speak anyway. And I ain't gonna go and never go home and go to sleep. Give me some chicken wing, put some hot sauce on it, and I'm going to sleep. You ain't gotta speak to me. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, see. I'm saying something to catch way. You stop getting messed up when folks don't speak to you. As a matter of fact, you're not the issue. They the issue. And they avoid you because they're going to on you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to put your name through the mud. So they walk by you like you done done something. They don't ain't done nothing to you. It's how you done me. I'm just going to keep on going what I'm going. Treat me that way. We ain't done that to you. You ain't gotta speak to me.
Because you messed up now, folk don't speak to you. You need to stop letting folk bother you. Amen. And they lie to you. I'm good, all right. I'm fine. No, you ain't fine. You didn't speak to me. You ain't fine. You got a grudge. You won't talk about it. You can talk about it. Now, nah, keep going. God bless you. Okay, I guess I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, 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 they avoid you. That's because they owe you money. Yeah. Even that real. Yeah. They owe you no money. You ain't they, they, somebody ain't owe you money. Somebody just done lied on you so long. They scared you know what they done done to you. So they ain't gonna look at you. Yeah. So they have to put them a toast up on you. They scared you know. See, they think you know what they are told on you. Because they are told so many lies on you. Talking about you so much. They think you know. Girl, I don't know what you done to me. Man, I don't know what you done to me. I keep on going. You got a problem. I ain't got no problem. I keep on moving. I'm almost done. Almost done. Jesus takes an advantage. The first thing Jesus does when he takes him out of the village is he spit in the man's eyes. Hmm. I imagine this man's eyes were probably diseased, shut down, crusted over. But Jesus turned to him. And spit <laughs> in the man's eyes. Come on now. Don't get this mixed up when he spit made the puddle. Amen. That's what he would do there. The text said he spit in the man's eyes. Some of y'all looking at me saying, ugh. Get the eyes on the ditch. To us, that sounds disgusting. Because if someone just accidentally spit on me. My food, come get my plate. I'm done. I'm, I'm full. Yeah. 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 No, I don't want nothing else. I'm done. Yeah. Look, this is disgusting. Yeah. 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 It looks disgusting. Yeah. Look at this. This was a custom yeah. in that time. Yeah. They believed it was healing in spittle. So so, 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 get this. Blind Bartimaeus, get this out. Jesus encountered some blind men differently. Yeah. Uh, blind Bartimaeus was blind, but got healed by the word. Mm -hmm. Another blind man got healed by Jesus' presence. Mm -hmm. now, now, and then uh, there was two blind men who got healed by Jesus' touch. Now, this blind man Get healed by Jesus' spirit. Right. Right. Sister Christian, you're a doctor. Doctor nurse, you know about this. Um, I don't know about no doctor spitting on me. <laughs> My brother over here is saying, I don't know about no nurse spitting on me. He's going to heal you.
Y'all look at me strange. He can't see, but all of a sudden, he feels some wet on his face. But watch this, y'all. The man didn't move because Jesus touched him. Verse 26. This is our Lord's goal for every one of his children. 
when the Lord first begins to work with us, we're totally blind. Uh -huh. We're in a sinful condition. Yes, Jesus come along uh -huh. and spit in our eyes. Yeah. He brings conviction and total shakes up our world. Uh -huh. Jesus heals the blind man. Yeah. He also teaches the disciples a lesson that they probably never really grasped. That it is a powerful miracle with a powerful message. Amen. Uh -huh. However, this miracle is on a very interesting note. Jesus tell the healed man he's not to return back to Bethsaida. Uh -huh. Nor is he to tell anyone about the miracle. Uh -huh. Now, this is the first time Jesus told someone not to tell others. When he did this, it is usually to prevent great crowds from gathering or to prevent the people from getting caught up in the frenzy of his miracles. This time, I think the Lord's reasons are different. As I told you earlier, he told him don't go back because Bethsaida was cursed. And his way of this is different because we need to hide out. Don't go into the village that Jesus gives us a warning not to go back into it. He said, don't go back into what I pulled you out of. Right. And that's my message with about five of you in the room and another 25 on Facebook. Right. That God that pulled you out of some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go back into the stuff he pulled you out of. You've come to a new place in your life. A new relationship with Christ. Don't go back into what he pulled you out of. You receive some new stuff from God. Sometimes people can talk you out of what God has done for you. Don't let the enemy trick you and take you back in to what God has brought you out of. I don't know who I'm preaching to in this room this morning. If you're two days clean, stay two days clean. If you're two days left him, stay two days left him. If you got back into your Bible study, keep studying. Don't let the enemy talk you out of what God has brought you out of. You got to be careful because the enemy sometimes can take you back into what God has delivered you from. And I don't know who I'm talking to in the room this morning, but sometimes God has touched us over and over. And God touched you to bring you out of what you was in. And God has touched you enough to bring you out. And God will touch you again. But you ain't got to know that God don't mind touching you. Because God was a perfect healing in your life. And he'll touch you all over again. And I need somebody to wrap your head back and say, Lord, I know he said we need a touch. But God, I need another touch from you. God, if you touch me, everything will be all right. God, if you touch me, I'll be made whole. God, if you touch me, I'll walk away from that stuff. God, if you touch me, I won't go back to it. God, if you're ready to touch me, I'll leave him alone. If you're ready to touch me, I'll tell him about that. If you're ready to touch me, God, I can do what you tell me to do. If you're ready to touch me, I'll speak to my enemies. If you're ready to touch me, I'll love everybody. Lord, I need another touch. I want to see the light in the room today. They say, Lord, it's me, God. You touched me once before, but God, I need you to touch me again. I need another touch. I don't want to go back into what I was into. And God, if you touch me, I'll change my ways. God, if you touch me, I'll walk a new way. God, if you touch me, I'll be made whole. God, I need your touch. And whatever my circumstances is, whatever my situation is, God, I know that you can touch me. God, I need a healing in my body. God, I need my finances blessed. Touch me again. God, I need my job switched. Touch me again. God, I need my marriage worked on. Touch me again. God, I want to do better in the ministry. Touch me again. God, I want to sing your praises. Touch me again. God, I want to preach to be the best preacher I can be. Touch me again. God, I just want to serve you the best I can. Touch me again. God, I want you to touch me.
keep on touching me, Golda, because he loved me so. And because he loved me, he doesn't want me to stay in this thing. The Bible said, if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and touch me again. The Bible says, if I call on his name and ask him what I need, and I believe in it, he'll touch me again. The Bible says, anything I ask in his name and believe it, he'll touch me again. Is there anybody in the room that don't got to keep on? Touch me again. Lord, we need God bless you.
ain't not, there's not one perfect person in this room. Amen. But we serve a perfect God. If that's you, join us today. Membership, text us today. Membership. Can we pray for all of you real quick and we'll let you take a seat take our communion? God, we thank you now for this day. We think that our eyes have seen, our hearts have felt, our ears have heard. Father, we thank you that you allow us another touch. Father, we pray you bless those that are sick and shedding. We pray that you bless those that are filled this. Amazing big son. The walk along family. So David Richardson. God, we lift their issues, their concerns up to you right now. God, we thank you for healing and blessings in their lives. Pastor Holmes. Yes. Pastor Moorhead. Yes. All those that we are do the aid and the pray for. We ask you to touch them. Those that are watching us on Facebook, those that are watching us virtually, those in the sanctuary, those that didn't want you to, who didn't care about putting their name in, we just trust you with their lives. That God, you'll make a way. God, there's one grasping today whether to give their life or not. We pray you to speak to their heart. That they know today is the acceptable day to let you touch them again. Father, have your way now. He said the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thank God for you. Bless God. Listen, come on, prepare now to share in our Lord's Supper. Can somebody get me a mic for Dr. Perry? Uh, can you close my key mic? Well, she's going to share with us our communion this morning. Amen. Come on up.
and having blessed both the bread and the cup. Yes. He said to them, this represents my blood which is shed for you. Drink ye all of it. And we do likewise. Yeah. Now Paul said, as often as we eat this bread mm -hmm. and we drink this cup, yeah. we do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. Yeah. When they left that room that night, the scripture says, they sang a hymn yeah. and they went out into the Mount of Olives. Yeah. We don't have a Mount of Olives that we can identify as they did, but somewhere out there, mm -hmm. as we leave this place, yes. there's somebody who needs to hear about yes. the body yes. and the blood of Jesus yes. that was shed for you and I. Yes. Go ye therefore and tell them yes. that Jesus died yes. for us. Yes. His body was broken and his blood was shed. Yes. But he rose again yes, on the yes. third day. Yes. 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 And right now, he sits on the right hand of God, yes. making intercession for us. Yes. Go ye therefore and tell them tell. that they might know. Senator, we thank you for partaking in our communion. We pray that that will, uh, as we do that, we do it as she says often, as we do, we do it remember us our Lord and Son, Jesus Christ. It is now giving time. It is now giving time. Amen. 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 It is now time for you to give in your offering. Those of you watching us on Facebook, we pray that you uh, do as we do the same. We take your gift, put it in your right hand. If you wouldn't extend your gift, you have your checkbook that you've already, your app that you've already given on, lift it up before the Lord and ask God's bless upon you. God, we thank you now for gift and giver. Thank you for the spirit of giving the mind and give the heart to give the love that we're able to give. Take our gifts, multiply them, sanctify them, and increase them. They gotta be used for your glory. We thank you for every gift, every giver. We pray that you bless a hundredfold in us. Do what you told us to do. We love you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're watching us on Facebook and you want to give, we have our uh, cash out. Uh, dollar sign UBC 614. You can give through that. Dollar sign UBC 614. But you can also give to our Giveify app. Uh, download your system and give there. There's also going to be a trustee here till 1 o'clock. If you want to come by and give, you can do that. If you want to mail it in, you can do that. And those who are in the sanctuary, as you prepare to exit the building, you can put in your offering place. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, virtually worshipers. We're glad you joined us. Lord, say the same. We'll see you back here again next week. May God bless you. May God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.